The future first lady is defending her reputation against a British newspaper that she says published lies about her. Melania Trump appeared in a Maryland courtroom Monday in her defamation lawsuit against the Daily Mail and specifically one of its blockers. She claims the newspaper published false stories alleging that she previously worked as an escort and that she suffered a nervous breakdown. In fact, during the presidential campaign, the stories were later retracted. For more on the case, we turn to CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman here. And uh, Ricky, uh, public figure and defamation. Uh, at first blush, it doesn't look good for the future first lady, but... Well, there's a big but. Um, public figures have an extraordinarily high burden of proof, and that's why they almost always lose. You have to show that the writer or publisher went forth with this article with quote unquote actual malice. That doesn't mean hatred or ill will. What that means is you have a reckless disregard for the truth. So, with a normal person, meaning not a public figure, a usual citizen, you just have to show negligence. That's a much lesser burden. So, ordinarily, I would say to you, Josh, public figure, very little chance, case may get tossed. And I can only think of one other time where I have said that a public figure has a chance of success on the merits. And in this case, I think she really very well may. You do? I do. And so it does then get to things like how do we define this adjective, reckless. With regard to this case, the two stories uh, that made these allegations were retracted. Will that have an impact here? Well, I think it's nice that they retracted them, <laughs> and they retracted them promptly. And I'm sure if this case should ever get to a jury, that the jury would consider that they did a prompt retraction, let alone an apology. However, the damage is done in the publication. And the publication here was simply to say there are rumors out there. And there's rumors out there that this is what happened during the campaign. There was no, again, we should point out, there was no sourcing there referred is no to. Sourcing that we know of. Yeah. Um, it's really like, uh, you know, going online and going on the internet and you see some scurrilous rumor and you go and then republish it. The difficulty with all of this is that, of course, the First Amendment protects reporters, writers, publishers, because it should. But it does not give them constitutional protection to say something simply that is false and something that is this inflammatory without consequences. That's what research is for. Um, in this case, you have things that we call uh, libel per se. And what those are is she's being accused of a crime. If she's been said to be an escort, that's being a prostitute and also that she has a mental illness and had a nervous breakdown this isn't like some toss-off comment saying oh that person's crazy you know which people don't take seriously mm -hmm. these were detailed statements meant to be taken seriously even if they were put out there as rumors and well the Daily Mail says ah oh, you can regard them with a grain of salt um, I think she's hired a great lawyer the lawyer who defended Hulk Hogan in his lawsuit against Gawker. Well, and uh, Mr. Harder knows how to go forward on behalf of a plaintiff and go forward with a defamation case. Um, to say that all of this is in the public interest, mm -hmm. of course the background of the future first lady is in the public interest. But that doesn't mean you can publish untruths, let alone something at this inflammatory level. To see then uh, this case, let's say it's not thrown out, there's no summary judgment found. The closer, essentially, this gets to a jury, the better for the future first lady? I think so. The case is going to be done on the motion <laughs> practice, meaning motions to dismiss, motions for summary judgment. If this case survived those motions and gets to a jury, a reasonable juror, particularly a reasonable female juror, is going to say, how would I be damaged? How would the reasonable woman be damaged if I were called um, an escort slash prostitute and that I had a mental illness and was having a nervous breakdown. I think she could break the bank if it goes to a jury. And we should note uh, very quickly, too, that uh, the the damage is done at the time of publication. Correct. Again, it has nothing to do with how things might sit now, nor the fact, again, that those stories were 
eventually retracted. Right. Um, One uh, of the things that we also have to think about, Josh, is how many people are out there who somehow got a snippet of this yeah. and then it gets repeated and repeated again and have like this nagging feeling that maybe it's true. That's exactly why you cannot allow simple rumors to look like fact. And in this case, it certainly does appear as though they have. Fascinating stuff here, Ricky, as always. We appreciate it. Thanks, Josh.